everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my monthly wrap up for the month of March. Now this month, this previous month, I read quite a few books. I read 15 books, which includes one audiobook, so I listened to that one. However, it's a lot to get through, so I'm going to try to do this quickly. Um, I'm going to not talk about them in order of having been read, but in grouping. So the first group of books I will talk about will be the graphic novels that I read for the month, then the fiction, and then finally the nonfiction. So the first two graphic novels I want to talk about I don't have with me because I returned them to the library, but one of them is Midlife by Joel Ullman. He's a Canadian graphic um, artist, and this book is about his midlife crisis. He has a new baby from a second marriage, two daughters from a previous marriage, he has an incredibly stressful job, and he is developing an infatuation with a, uh, a children's music star um, and, and things kind of get crazy from there. Nonetheless, I, wa I did enjoy the book. I felt that it was entertaining. The next book that I absolutely loved is Persepolis 2, um, the second in the series by Marjane Satrapi. If you haven't read these books or anything by her or watched the film, I suggest you do. It's a coming of age story dealing with her, well in the second book, her leaving Iran due to war and religious fundamentalism and it deals with her journey and it's also very informative about what was happening in Iran and also what life is like to leave your country and then to return. Um, I personally have a friend who is the same age as Marjane Satrapi who went through, who lived in Iran and had, had to experience similar things so I like the insight of that book. Next, I have um, French Milk by Lucy Knisley. I'm not a big fan of this book. I did a review of it. If you want to hear about it, you can watch those pre that previous video. Also, I read Night Fisher by Arki Kiro Johnson. This is a book about Hawaii. I did a review on this as well. I absolutely love this book. I do recommend it. Next is A Bag of Marvel Marbles, pardon. This is by Joseph Joffo. And this is a beautiful Full, fully colored illustrated book. It's about uh, two Jewish boys who have to flee northern France into the unoccupied zone. What happens to them and their family? Um, it's a it's difficult subject matter. However, it is beautifully illustrated and it's it's a short read. I really like this book. And then finally for graphic novels, I read this book called Tricked. It was very entertaining. It uh, follows the lives of six different characters who have very separate lives, but then their lives kind of intertwine in this major event, and I felt that this was a very entertaining read. So next, I will move on to the fiction that I read for the month. I read The Virgin Suicides by, Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Now, I've read Middle Sex previously and absolutely loved that book, but this one didn't catch uh, my fancy. Uh, it talks about a, a family of girls who are going to commit suicide. The point of view is that of the neighborhood boys who are infatuated with these girls. And the language was nice in many parts of this book, but it just didn't excite me like Middlesex did. What I did enjoy was anything, any mentioning of Detroit in this book, because I'm interested in, in that area, as well as there is a Greek grandmother that's mentioned at the end of the book, and I enjoyed reading that because it harkens back to the wonderful characters that are in Jeffrey Eugenides' Middlesex. Um, I also read this collection of short stories called When I Was Mortal by Javier Marais. He's a Spanish author, but I, I was glad to finish this book. None of them really caught me. It's I've read other short story collections that I absolutely loved, but this one didn't really do much for me. So speaking of short stories, I listened to Runaway by Alice Munro. Uh, in her short stories, the characters, uh, the main characters are usually women, and some of these stories are are absolutely excellent. I'd like to read more of her writing next time. In some of the stories she jumps around a lot which is hard to follow if you're listening to it. So um, next time I'm, I'm going to read it um, so I can actually see those paragraph breaks. But I was a huge fan of the title story Runaway. Um, it really haunted me after I listened to it. Uh, I really recommend this. Uh, she's a very famous Canadian author and I want to read more of her books. 
Next, I finally read Lolita uh, by Nabokov. This is a very funny 80s edition with this young girl who has too much dramatic makeup. Um, what to say about this book? I'm happy to have read it because it is an important work of literature and the writing really sucks you in. It's absolutely lovely. However, though the writing is lovely, the content of the book is difficult to deal with. You learn so much about um, the main character and sometimes I don't want to know what he's thinking. It's uncomfortable and seeing his point of view uh, it's interesting, but um, but challenging to say the least. But I'm glad I finally read this. I'm a I am a big fan of Kubrick's version of the film, though the content in that is the same, so therefore difficult. But nonetheless, uh, I'm glad to have read it since I love the film. And I also read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This was highly recommended on YouTube and I enjoyed it, but um, I enjoyed the story overall. It starts to unfold and you start to really learn what happens at the end. What this is about is about a woman, the last woman to be executed in, in Iceland, and you start to learn what really happened that evening. But for me, the most important part of the book was the atmosphere, the atmosphere that um, Hannah Kent writes about in there. You really feel how stark and cold and difficult the landscape of Iceland is and I think that is good, very interesting um, next to what is happening to the main character as well as the family who has to take care of her before her beheading. I also read A Novel Without a Name by Yung Tu Hung. I finished this recently. Um, I just recently got back from living and working in Vietnam where I was able to meet my family and also start to learn Viet the Vietnamese language and learn more about the culture. So now that I'm removed from that, I actually want to read more books about Vietnam now that I have free time. Um, this book, Yung Tu Hung, she was actually a child soldier herself and she was one, one of very few survivors in her group. They died in the conflict. Um, and this talks about a Badoi, which is a boy, a child soldier, who after 10 years of loss and suffering and an illness becomes incredibly disillusioned by the war. He joined the war for the glory of the Northern Vietnamese army, who are of course communists and who are fighting for the people. Uh, and against the southern Vietnamese army who are of course aided by the Americans. Now there isn't a lot of mention of the Americans in this book at all. They of course are involved in the conflict because we know the history of the war, but the word American isn't even mentioned until page 200 of the war. It's not critical of that. Um, it doesn't focus on that. What it's more critical of is the North Vietnamese army um, who are fighting for the people, but he doesn't feel that is happening anymore. He feels like the people are being used. Um, and there's a really good uh, passage in here. Uh, you see the people, they do exist from time to time, but they're only a shadow. When they need rice, the people are the buffalo that pulls the plow. When they need soldiers, they cover the people with armor, put guns in the people's hands. When all is said and done at the festivals, when it comes time for the banquets, they put the people on an altar and feed them incense and ashes. But the real food, that's always for them. So I felt that this was a really good book. There's a lot of mention of this desire to return to home, to return to village life, and often to return to your mother. And I felt that to be very poetic through the book. Um, I think it's good and important to read books from other perspectives, and this provided me provided me that. Um, so I'm going to be reading more books about this subject matter, and I felt that it was a really great read. Next, I'm going to go through quickly the nonfiction I read. This is Ways of Seeing by John Berger. This is an important uh, book on visual culture, and, and if you're interested in art history, it speaks about a lot about how we perceive things, how we perceive women, um, how we perceive advertising, and I, it was a great read. It's not very long. Next, if you have interest in visual art or contemporary art, this is The Lives of the Artist by Calvin Tompkins. Um, he is a writer for the, the New Yorker, and this talks about 10 contemporary artists. Um, unfortunately, I really like this book, actually. Unfortunately, it only mentions one female artist, Cindy Sherman, um, and maybe that's kind of telling of the art world today or who 
who becomes really successful. Nonetheless, it was an entertaining read. If that's an area of interest, I suggest you pick this up. And then finally, a great coffee table book um, is By the Book, which is Writers on Literature from the New York Times Review of Books. I pretty much read the whole thing. Um, there are a few authors for which I skipped because I didn't have any interest. However, this gives you great insight on the authors that you love by seeing what they've read or even what they haven't read or what they've read as a child. Um, so this is a good book to just pick up here and there or if you're looking for recommendations to add to your Goodreads list, I suggest checking this out. So those are all the books that I read. Um, it's quite a few. Uh, I'm curious to see what you all are reading and if you have any recommendations for me, please comment down below and thanks for watching. See you.